Hi there! In this video, we are going to discuss Newton's second law of motion, the law of acceleration. If you still haven't watched part 1, pause this video and click the link below to watch it before this one. Since we already know the fundamental concepts of force and motion from part 1, we will now continue learning about the second law of motion. Newton's law of acceleration states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force on it and inversely proportional to its mass. This means that the force acting on an object is equal to the mass of that object times its acceleration. Put simply, the greater the mass of the object being accelerated, the greater the amount of force needed to accelerate the object. To help us understand this better, let's take this example. The boy at the front has to apply less force to accelerate the bicycle since he has less mass. The man at the back needs to apply more force to accelerate the bicycle because of the added mass of the woman. We can summarize this law in this equation. Force is equal to mass times acceleration where F is force, M is is mass and A is acceleration. Likewise, the acceleration of an object is equal to the sum of the forces acting on it, divided by the mass of the object. And the mass of an object is equal to the sum of the forces acting on it, divided by the acceleration of an object. The unit of measurement for force is Newton. It is the amount of force that will accelerate a 1 kilogram mass at the rate of 1 meter per second squared. Since force is equals to mass times acceleration, therefore, 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second squared. Another concept we need to understand is weight. Weight is the force due to gravity. Therefore, weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity where acceleration due to gravity has a constant of 9.8 meters per second squared. Here is a sample problem if we're trying to compute force. Engineers at the Johnson Space Center must determine the net force needed for a rocket to achieve an acceleration of 70 meters per second squared. If the mass of the rocket is 45,000 kilograms, how much net force must the rocket develop? So we have the formula, force equals to mass times acceleration. The given mass is 45,000 kilograms multiplied to the required acceleration of 70 meters per second squared. We now get the value of 3,150,000 kilogram meter per second squared, which is also equivalent to 3,150,000 newtons. Let's have another example. This time, we're going to compute for the acceleration of a 0.60 kilogram ball of mass hit with a force of 12 newtons. Again, we have the formula, force equals to mass times acceleration. To look for the acceleration, transmute this formula by dividing force to the mass. We now have the new formula, acceleration equals force divided by mass. So divide the given force of 12 newtons by the mass of 0.60 kilograms. Note that a newton is equivalent to kilogram meter per second squared. We can cancel out the unit kilogram, which leaves us to the unit meters per second squared. 12 meters per second squared divided by 0.60 equals 20 meters per second squared. Let's have one last example. This time, we are asked to look for the mass of an encyclopedia. Again, we have the formula force equals to mass times acceleration. To look for the mass, transmute this formula by dividing force to the acceleration. We now have the new formula mass equals force divided by acceleration. We divide the force of 50 newtons by the acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. Since newton is equivalent to kilogram meter per second squared, we can cancel out the unit meter per second squared, 
which leaves us with the unit kilogram. 15 kilograms divided by 5 equals 3 kilograms, which is the mass of the encyclopedia. In summary, when a force acts on an object, it will accelerate in the direction of the force with an amount directly proportional to the force exerted while inversely proportional to the mass of the object. This relationship can be explained by Newton's second law of motion or the law of acceleration. That's all for now. See you on our next video and don't forget to keep your minds busy. Thanks for watching our video. If you want to see more content from the Learning Bees, please hit the subscribe button. See you later!